I, you know, when I wrote that song, I, it was just I just loved the chords and I loved the the concept of it. Um, you know, I, it, it just, you know, I remember I remember just being really excited coming up with that chorus, and you know, David Foster producing it. And when Whitney, you know, decided to do it, I was so, I mean, I was so excited about that. I think that's that's maybe. That's one of my favorite songs I've done for Whitney. You know, everybody really loves that song. It has like a James Bond kind of thing to it. And, there's all, and David put the Chicago horns kind of vibe in it. It was just a really kind of classic record and her vocals, you know, beyond. You know, it, Clive Davis, everything with me and Whitney has, it was always Clive Davis because, you know, Clive, that was Clive's artist. And um, a lot of times I'd bring him songs and I'd want something for Whitney and he'd go, no, no, I want that for, um, you know, well, one of the memorable times was like, Unbreak My Heart. I want that for Tony Braxton. Why not Whitney or, or, or something for Expose? And so a song like I Learned From The Best, I brought him for Whitney. And he said, yeah, that's, that's a Whitney song. Um, and, you know, it just... It, it was just a cool, a cool, different kind of song for Whitney. Whitney is unquestionably the best singer of her generation. What, what Whitney could do with a song was unlike what anybody could do with a song. And what, what, what Whitney put in, in Un I Learned From The Best, there was like this kind of, you know, fuck you quality, but sadness at the, at the same time, you know? Like you see, you hear within the notes, there's a, like a vulnerability, mm -hmm. but yet there's a strength. And I think that's what, what she brought to that song in particular. The, the team, you know, w w with me and David Foster and Whitney was just an, an amazing team, you know, just, you know, I'm not a producer. And, and David is, is he's, the, all, he's like one of the best producers of all time and also maybe the best vocal producer of all time. And just hearing what he could get out of, you know, it's like a race car driver driving the fastest Ferrari, you know. So it's just like what he could bring out of Whitney, you know, was, was amazing. And I, and I was like privileged and, and honored to be a part of that collaboration. I mean, they were two different concepts, two different songs. Um, you know, all three of those songs are, are, are pretty different, you know, musically as well. Um, you know, they were just, it's hard to answer that question. I mean, you know, You'll Never Stand Alone is this, you know, song about I'll be there for you, and I bow out as I won't be there for you. <laughs> I'm bowing out. You know, I, I wasn't there the whole, you know, for all the vocals. Um, you know, just, um, I was so excited to be able to be a part of that album. Um, you know, again, when I used to bring songs to Clive, it would be like, you know, for Whitney, they would never be for Whitney. So with, with these songs, Clive goes, these are Whitney songs. And I, I was just so happy. And, you know, and hearing, you know, the records, they, they stand. That's a great album. You know, I don't want to think about how long it is, but did you say 25 years? I think so. No, I wouldn't have done anything different, you know. The songs are great, the, the production's great. It's Whitney Houston singing my songs. It's the, the, the greatest, you know, gift a song could ever have is, is a voice like Whitney Houston singing something you wrote. So I'm still grateful to this day that I got to work with her on this album and, and many other songs as well. My first impression was that she was really nice. You know, I've worked with a lot of artists through the years and not all of them are nice, not all of them are, uh, you know, some of them have, you know, of course, really, especially with, with that kind of success, you have a really big ego, um, you're a diva or whatever, and she wasn't. My, my experience with Whitney, she was just a really kind, nice person that happened to have one of the best voices, of, you know, of all time, you know. I have a lot of them. One of my favorite memories is when everybody thought she wouldn't be able to, to hit, hit the notes on, on my song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength, on her last album, which is a song I wrote for her. And everybody's like, no, because she kind of thrashed out her voice at that point. And it was a really hard song to sing. And 
I remember every, you know, that was the last song to be recorded and David Foster was like, she's never gonna be able to hit those notes. A lot of people said that. I said, no, she's gonna be able to hit those notes because she's not singing from her vocal cords. She's gonna sing it from her soul. And I remember being in the studio with David and hearing that and going, yep, she's singing from her soul. Which is most personal? Well, even though I, I, I didn't know my own strength is um, for Whitney and about Whitney, I can relate to that song, you know, because you go through a lot in life, you know, sometimes you don't know your own strength. I think I, I love the fact that, the, I mean, Whitney was a classic artist and she made classic records out of classic songs. And those songs and those records and those performances will last forever. Um, and anybody that wants to be a singer, you know, if, if you want to know what a real singer is, go listen to Whitney Houston. That she was a kind person and a good person and a vulnerable person. You know, she, you know, she just happened to have this amazing, amazing gift, but, she, but underneath it all, she was such a good person.